With Xenoblade Chronicles Cross not quite being the definitive sequel for me, I turned to Monolith Soft's other major sequel, Project Cross Zone 2, the fifth game in the Namco crossover universe and the second game in the Cross Zone series. Now with Nintendo on board, how does this game with characters from four of the biggest video game companies in Japan fare compared to its crazy mashup predecessor? Project Cross Zone 2 is a cross between a graphic novel and a strategy role playing game, the story and dialogue play a major role. On the surface the story is relatively simple, gold chains are appearing everywhere, chain of the universe is all together, and it's up to your team of heroes from all these multiple video game series to find out what's really going on, and put a stop to the evil organisation, UMA. However, there's a lot of different little stories going on underneath that usually tie into individual games franchise. Things like Shadow Lou trying to get Hihachi arrested for smuggling a virus from Resident Evil into Japan, forcing him to seek Phoenix Wright for legal advice. It's this sort of crazy stuff that gives the game a lot of its charm. Overall, the story is very entertaining and definitely more enjoyable if you know the games the characters come from. If you don't, you might find the story a bit shallow. Project Cross Zone 2 has taken a lot of inspiration from its roots back on the PlayStation 2 with Namco's Cross Capcom. It's even made the protagonists from that game, Reggie and Zaimu, the main characters again, who I actually personally like better than the new ones they introduced in Project Cross Zone 1. The main selling point however is not the story itself, but the dialogue between the characters. This game is no SSB subspace emissary with completely silent protagonists. You're going to get... Satori telling Krom he can only play in classic mode, and Chun-Li and Zayu discussing whether or not to put on muscle. There is lots of talking. Yes, lots and lots of talking. This is the real make or break of this game. While I like the cheesy dialogue, I could also see why the people would not like it, and yes, the talk scenes can go on for a while, while everybody has something to say. So I'm going to give it about an 8.5 out of 10. I was laughing a lot throughout this game, it, it's just hilarious. The storyline is silly, the characters are silly, and it's just it's just such an enjoyable game to play simply for the story arcs and stuff. Like Cross Zone 1, Cross Zone 2 is also a 3DS game and thus has little changes to the graphics. The most notable difference is slightly more of those close-up animations in the special attacks and slightly more detailed maps. Overall the game looks like it could possibly be made in the DS with a little downgrade. However the main selling point here is the flashy over the top attacks you see conducted onto your foes and yes they can be very entertaining to watch and you don't get bored in a hurry you see different bits of detail every time you watch the fights. As for sound, Cross Zone 2 is a track consisting of several classics from the games it pulls from including Ryu's theme and the Sakura Wars main theme. It also has several new tracks that help with the mood of the story. Overall, most of the songs are pretty catchy. With only about three songs per franchise, don't be surprised if your favourite was missed out. Overall, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Graphics are still lagging a bit. First of the music, I still have the Virtual Fighter anime theme stuck in my head. And now onto what's probably the most important part of the game, the gameplay. Players of Cross Zone 1 will notice several big changes to the game here. Cross Zone 2 has taken much more of a Fire Emblem approach to SRPG than its predecessor. Gone as the every unit has a turn to move based on their speed. Instead you go into the classic, your team moves, their team moves. I've appreciated this change, as the fast characters used to get all the kills before the slow characters could even move. This game has also put in positioning mechanics, that is, side and back attacks do more damage, just giving more strategy to the overall game. Battles have also been changed, the units only have 3 attacks they can make per battle. Also, attacks not used in battle will be charged up for the next battle, where they can deal more damage. This has now removed the old style of simply cycling through all your attacks for the bonus attack back in Cross Zone 1. This game has also introduced new moves where you can cancel out of an attack to regain an attack, but I have yet to make much use out of this. One of the biggest mechanics of Cross Zone is the cross hit, which seems to be a lot harder to perform in this game it yields a much higher reward, grabbing more damage and faster filling XP meter. Finally, the game offers a much higher amount of customization with the ability to equip passive skills and upgrade the attacks of units, allowing them to specialize in damage, status affecting, or being a strong support. So overall, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Cross Zone 2 offers a much more strategic game than its predecessor, without losing too much of its core mechanics. And now for the verdict. I have really enjoyed Cross Zone 2 a lot more than its predecessor, being both a better story and gameplay. 
I can finally feel free to call Cross Zone an SRPG, and not just a visual novel with some simple beat em up action in between. I have high hopes this series will continue to improve, and maybe one day revival the likes of other crossovers like Kingdom Hearts and Super Smash Bros. So, overall, I'm going to give this game an 8 out of 10. Some might call it niche, but I have really enjoyed the crossover experience Namco and Monosoft made in the 3DS, and hope that the series continues to improve. Who knows, maybe Square Enix and Konami might join and add some of their characters in, but as long as they keep delivering this hilarious, fun and enjoyable gameplay, I think I'll still keep buying it up.